Hey guys, welcome to Crafts Go Bloom, and today we are going to be making scrunchies start to finish so that you can see just how fast they really are. Okay, let's get started. So we are making these velvet scrunchies, and I am using just regular Bernat velvet. My husband picked this up for me from Ollie's. Um, our Ollie's is kind of far away and he happened to be driving by, so I asked him to stop. So this might not be a color that you can still find, but it's called Chilled Blue. And they were only $4.99 at Ollie's. And I've, I've made, let's see, 15 scrunchies so far out of this one skein and I still have quite a bit of it left. I'm using these black hair ties, these Ouchless hair ties. I just got these on Amazon. And so I've got one of those I'm using a size four and a half hook. And then other things we're gonna need are scissors and a tapestry needle at the end. Now I like to cover up this little part where the hair tie comes together with my knot so that none of my stitches get stuck on it. And I just loop the yarn through and tie a knot right over that part. And uh, I do this a couple times. I really wanna make sure that this doesn't come loose later on and I'm making these for selling. So I, you know, I have no idea where they're gonna end up and I wanna make sure they're good and tight and, and good to use. Now, the only two stitches I use for this are a single crochet and a double crochet. And so for the first round, um, I am just single crocheting into the hair tie as if it was a magic ring. So put my hook under, pull the yarn up, yarn over, pull through both loops. And as I'm doing that, I am also going over this tail a little bit, um, and then I'll weave that in at the end. And I love this pattern because there's no counting involved. I just keep going until it's done. And we're gonna do one round of single crochets around the entire thing. And you'll notice when you get about halfway around the scrunchie. Go ahead and slide those stitches over like this. You're gonna, you're gonna scrunch the scrunchie. And this will make it so that at the end, um, we actually get this ruffled look. Otherwise it's going to just look like a flat disc if we don't have enough um, single crochets to do double crochets into. Now I like this color of yarn that I've gotten from Ollie's. I've had some trouble in the past. Um, I got a, a dark blue color this same day um, and the dark blue color was pilling a lot. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna use that for anything, but I'm definitely not going to be using it for scrunchies that I'll be selling because I don't want to make a product that's going to fall apart um, when my customer takes it home especially because I'm assuming, um, you know, a lot of scrunchies are going to be gifted and things like that. And so I don't want the, the pilling yarn to be passed along, but I have had great success with, with this one. As you can see, I keep almost getting to the end. And then uh, when you scrunch it all over, I'm only about halfway. Now I just grabbed, I like doing this, this pattern with a four and a half hook. Um, I just went ahead and grabbed the first hook that I found, but I just bought these off Amazon. I do have clover hooks. I do really like them. I do prefer an ergonomic hook to just the plain metal ones. Those I can't crochet for very long without hand pain if I'm using the non-ergonomic ones. Oh, and I forgot to say that this is a bulky five 
five weight. I also have some Bernat Baby Velvet in a four weight, and I have made some scrunchies with that, but it just takes a little longer because the yarn is a little thinner. So you just have to do the exact same pattern, but more stitches and it, um, like the outer, outer size is a little bit smaller at the very end. But this hook, this is just off Amazon. Um, I bought when I first learned to crochet, uh, almost three years ago now, I bought this cheap pack because I wasn't sure if I was really going to stick with it or really be able to figure it out. And they were 15 or $20 and it, it got me like every size hook with ergonomic hooks and non-ergonomic ergonomic hooks. It came with stitch markers and a whole bunch of things. Uh, and those have actually lasted me this entire time. I'm, I'm still using them. Buy the clover ones if you can afford the clover ones, but the cheaper ones off Amazon will last you for a long time. Okay, I'm getting around to the end here. Squishing it as much as I can. You don't want to, well you can, but to make it more roughly. Um, I'm not necessarily trying to stretch the hair tie and shove more stitches in, but you do want to push it over so that you don't have a big black uh, stretch of hair tie, hair tie showing. And then when I get around, I slip stitch into the first stitch, chain two, and now I start doing two double crochets in every single crochet. And that is what works for this size five Bernat velvet yarn. Now I love this project because as you'll see, the entire thing takes about 10 minutes. So I can make quite a few of these in a short amount of time, or if I don't have very much time, but I need to get a little bit of market prep type thing done, then I can whip these up real quick. And I do have these in a few other colors and they will be in my Etsy shop soon as well. One of the nice things about this project is it, you don't have to count. I mean, you can count to two if you would like to, <laughs> but you don't have to worry if you accidentally put three stitches in three double crochets into one single, it's going to turn out okay. If you accidentally only have one double in a single crochet, that's, that's going to work too. If you're messing up every other stitch, you're not gonna get a very even ruffle at the end, but you know, if you miss one here or there, it's gonna be okay, which can make this a great project for beginners. I don't have any trouble seeing the stitches in the velvet yarn because I've done this a lot and I've had um, a lot of experience with the velvet yarn, but if you're not used to this and what you learned on is like a number four worsted weight, these can be difficult to see because they look so fluffy. Give you a shot here. So you, you may be able to see those stitches, you may not. So if you're struggling to find every single stitch, it's okay if you miss one or two here or there. So I will have these in my Etsy shop and then and at, at markets in person in the future. And I along with a, a lot of other things. But another thing I want to try for hair ties is actually doing two separate colors and making them in like team colors. So that's next on my list to try. I'm just pulling out more, more yarn. I'm hitting a knot in the center of my yarn, trying not to pull out half the skein. Now I tried to make one of these with a Bernat blanket yarn the other day uh, in a bulky six and um, it was Bernat baby blanket sparkle and I thought the color would look nice but I don't think that the the Bernat blanket a real thick size six does very well. Some of the the like plush velvet bulkier ones do well but I I was struggling with 
getting the Bernat blanket to not make the the inside of the scrunchie so big because it added so much thickness that it then became uncomfortable to wear. Where I feel like this velvet doesn't change it very much and it's still comfortable. As I mentioned, this is just the inexpensive hook off of Amazon and I have no problems with this. I do have the Clover set of hooks. I did wait until those were uh, half off though, because those can get pretty pricey. Um, and I think you can find them on sale pretty often or Joanne will have a 50% off of a regular priced item coupon and I would wait for one of those. Otherwise they're like $80 for the set. And then I have some larger, some larger size clover hooks that I just wait and um, when there's a yarn sale at Joanne, I buy all the yarn on sale and I use the 40 or 50% off coupon to buy one of the larger size hooks. So I have like a, a six and a half and a seven and an eight. Um, I did pick up a couple of those at the recent Hobby Lobby yarn clearance sale. They had clover hooks on clearance as well that were 75% off. So I got a couple of sizes and I also got multiples of those so that my daughter can have her own and I don't have to wonder if mine is lost somewhere in the house. I usually crochet in the same spot so I have a little bag that all my hooks go in and I don't um, I don't tend to lose them so if I can't find one it's usually that my daughter has started her own project and run off of my hook. As you can see, it's starting to just ruffle on its own. Having twice as many double crochets in the second round than double or single crochets in the first round, it will just naturally do that. There's nothing that you need to do. Sometimes I move the ruffles around a little bit if I just don't like the pattern that they're laying out in. And if you use an even bulkier yarn, sometimes you have to do that. Um, you have to manipulate them to to go where you want them to, otherwise it sort of flattens out and kind of just looks like a like a bent disc. You can definitely get your practice on how to do double crochet. So if you're just learning and you just learned the double crochet stitch, which I, I just realized I didn't actually uh, explain the double crochet stitch, I'll do that here at the end. A project like this, you're just repeating them and repeating them. So as long as you can find your way through the single crochet stitches to know where to insert your hook, you would you would definitely be able to get some practice in. Double crochet, pretty easy to find a tutorial, but you're going to yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw it through two loops, yarn over, draw it through two more loops, and then you're done. Now when I get to the end, I go into the final single crochet that I can see before I slip stitched in the last round. But then I'm going to do two more over here because I don't want at the end we're going to um we're going to slip these two together, but I don't want a hole right there where I'm going to slip stitch. So I'm going to come over a little bit into my first double crochet and do two more down here. Whoops, that was at the top. Way down here. Just to close in that gap. And once we finish off, you're never going to really know where the beginning and the end was. And then we're going to do a slip stitch into the very first double crochet. I skip over those two chain stitches. And then when I finish off, I like to do my slip stitch and then just chain one and then cut a tail. 
that we can sew in and pull that through and pull that very tightly. So now we're finished except for weaving in our tails. We have the tail that's on the inside of the hair tie and we need to bring that up and weave it through the bottoms of these double crochets. Now I have metal tapestry needles. Um, I'm not really a fan of the plastic ones, but there are also plastic ones. So if you're teaching someone young or you've got someone young that wants to learn how to do these things, um, you may want them to have the plastic one, depending on how old they are. Now this project doesn't need any, any stitch markers at all, but I do use plastic stitch markers for the most part. I have some cute metal ones, but I I rarely get them out. So I am just weaving this through the bottom of the double crochets. And this will keep it from stretching when you go to put the scrunchie on, it will stay hidden in there. Now the second end that we need to weave in, and then we're done with this whole project. The second thing we need to do is, this is coming out the top, so we need to weave through these stitches here. So I can do this upside down. So weave through the loops of that first double crochet and pull that through, but not so tight that it, it pulls it completely out of, out of shape. And then we're doing the exact same thing. I'm going to follow the same path and go through the bottom loops of the double crochet. Now we're coming out of winter as I'm filming this and I have a lot of light blue, dark blue, uh, like a mint color um, in these velvets. They come in, in a lot of other colors though and so I'm thinking about getting some springy, summery colors, um, some pinks, uh, yellow. I think I'm going to add, add some different colors to my stock. And I go about halfway around the entire scrunchie when I am weaving an end in. My daughter will play fast and loose with the weaving the ends in sometimes, <laughs> especially as she was learning, she would like tie a knot and cut it off right then and, and not weave the ends in. So it leaves little, little bits hanging out everywhere, which didn't matter because she was just, she was just practicing and learning. So then we're going to cut this off, um, but I like to weave about halfway around the entire scrunchie just to make sure that we're really, really doing well on that. And then we're finished. And so this is something that you can quickly make a lot of, and I think these are going to be great market sellers. These are one of the best items as far as, um, profit because you can still charge a fair price for them, but make back your time on this one because they work up so quickly. And they're a great item if you are running out of time for um, the event you're prepping for or um, whatever you need them for, you can get a lot done pretty quickly as opposed to a bigger project. So I hope you enjoyed making this scrunchie with me today and I will see you in the next video. Bye.